Thank you very much and welcome everyone to this uh, study this evening. We are very thankful to have you all. To have you all study with us this evening. For those of us who are in for this study discussion and for those of us who are following on Facebook, you can simply leave a comment and you'll be able to uh, interact with you if you are interested. Um, for those of us who are here, this is a free discussion where everyone has an opportunity to share what the Lord impresses in their mind in regard to the subject matters that have been a little bit controversial. So before we start off with uh, today's discussion, I'll give a, a brief recap of what you're studying yesterday in regard to the edits in the spirit of prophecy. You remember yesterday, you were able to <clears throat> study on uh, the whole subject about the edits in the spirit of prophecy. And we were able to come to the conclusion that while the devil is wroth and has gone that he should be make war, he should make war with those who have the faith of Jesus Christ and or rather who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And uh, that is the spirit of prophecy and who also have or keep the commandments of God. Um, basically, we realize that there are actually two very important things that have been handed down to us to guide the remnant through the final days in this world's history. And we are able to find out that the Bible is our key and foundational book from which all our doctrines and reforms are drawn from. But God has not left his remnant people without a compass, without uh, something to solve and to make things which are not clear, very clear. And that is the spirit of prophecy. And you are able to see that the spirit of prophecy has been there from the very ancient times where God would communicate through prophets. And I, I know that uh, uh, we were able to find out that it is our main duty. It is our main duty as a people to establish the confidence of our congregations, of the people listening to us in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy. That is our burden. Our burden is not to always cite that there are all these, all these uh, tampering with the spirit of prophecy while that is true. And you see, that is what actually we have been given in every other single message. We establish people on that which is true. And we realize that it's true that there has been tampering with uh, the way certain compilations have been made. And also we have, uh, uh, please mute yourself if, if you are not talking so that you don't interfere with the recording. Um, it's also uh, sort of clear to us as, as a people that uh, 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 it's also clear to us as a people that uh, uh, if you are uh, a Seventh-day Adventist, then you should from a point of clear evidence whereby you are sure about what you're speaking about. And so, we are just not going to give rumors as to uh, the tampering that is found in the spirit of prophecy in the Bible. We have to have sufficient evidence. So if I mention that the spirit of prophecy has been tampered with, I must have evidence. And I'm able to cite that this is what the original was saying, and here is the original. And this is what the edition is saying. Most preferably, even by having what we call uh, what we call the, the hard copies or the scanned copies of, of Ellen, White, Ellen White's writing. So we are not going to deal with rumors because to spread a rumor is as evil before God as to lie. And so any minister who actually simply rumors about the, without sufficient evidence, is not fulfilling his position as probably as a faithful worker of God. So we must have evidence of what you're saying. If you're saying this is an addition, an insert, an inserted uh, 
text, then we must have evidence. But remember, we also realized yesterday that <clears throat> while you're talking about evidence, uh, we're talking about two or three witnesses. So for a matter to be established, we need two or three witnesses. And then we say that, of course, we must speak also in regard to the tampering where it is very clear. So the whole issue is not about neglecting to mention the errors that Babylon is doing uh, because Babylon must fall and we must expose Babylon so that we must have sufficient evidence to what we say. And we must establish the faith of the brethren in the spirit of prophecy, which is our key duty. So brethren, uh, that is as far as we went. And we want to start off today. And I want to ask one of our dear brothers to pray for us. And then we will be able to get started with the subject for today. So I am going to ask Brother Janius uh, to, uh, from, uh, um, that should be thicker to be able to pray for us, and then we'll be able to get started on our subject today, which I'll introduce after the prayer. Thank you. Okay, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you. We must thanksgiving. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We're asking you to send us an abundance of your Holy Spirit that we can learn what you would like us to see and to know so that we can always know how to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to work for you. Even in this program, we're asking you, please, if there is going to be any controversy in our minds that you might settle it. And we can all have one spirit and one truth so that it will enable us to stay together as we work for you or you work through us. Thank you again. We're asking you to forgive us our sins as you forgive those who trespass against us, the ones that are traveling also. Please be with them, even as others who will be gathering into this meeting help them so that they could be able to be with on one accord with all of us. Thank you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much, dear brother, for your prayer. That's really helpful to help us uh, start off. I'll basically be moderating this discussion and welcome every Facebooker and every single person here who will be watching this video later, Karibuni. Now, the whole matter of discussion today is the shape of the earth and is it salvational? Should we withdraw fellowship from those that don't see the same way as we do? If perhaps someone sees this thing differently, should we withdraw fellowship from those people? In other words, should we disfellowship them from the congregation of believers? Should we dismember them? Or should we separate from those who do not agree with our view about the shape of the earth? Let me bring you up to speed. There has been recently um, a rising uh, or agitation of the subject of the shape of the earth. Now listen carefully. What is happening is when you go to the social media, uh, when you go to your YouTube and you find videos there and you go to websites and you find articles and bloggers, Christian bloggers writing, and even in, in the world of there, there's an excitement that is actually taking hold about the whole subject of the shape of the earth. And what we are inquiring today is, is this subject salvational? Is it part of the three angels' messages? Or I could say, is it part of the truth that we must be established in if we have to enter into the most holy place experience? If we have to be with Jesus Christ where he is right now? Is it a matter of life and death? Is it a salvational matter? And then we'll be answering the second part of the question. If we find out that it's salvation or not, our next burden will be to find then, should we, should we, if someone says that it's flat, withdraw fellowship from him? If someone says it's round, withdraw fellowship from it? If someone says that globe, 
a withdrawal fellowship from it and someone defines a permanent differently from how I define a permanent, should we withdraw fellowship from it? So that's basically uh, the discussion that we want to be having today. And I am welcoming every single worker, every single Bible student, every single uh, canvasser, medical missionary, those who have joined this study organized by Gospel Sound as the Kingdom the Reformation Ministry, that we can be able to discuss this subject. And it's my prayer that the Spirit of God that binds the hearts of men together may be able to bind us together, may be able to bind us together as we study this very important subject so that we may, in the course of time, be one in faith. So I want to... Um, I want to ask if someone has any submission to make in regard to this as we start off. Is there anyone with a submission to make as we start off in regard to the shape of the earth? Okay, well, so maybe I I will give my remarks that might trigger some of you to think about what they have to say about what I say, if they will care with it or not. Uh, but they might be able to review and then we may just be able to start off. The whole concept about the shape of the earth, is it salvational? That is the main issue. Now, I personally, as Zadok, I am not really interested as much as I have my belief in regard to what the earth looks like, uh, I have my belief in regard to what the earth looks like, but my interest is, is it uh, salvation? I'm trying to uh, allow some people in so you will excuse my uh, 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 little bit of some interruption there. So the whole issue uh, for me is, what is it to me? What is it to me? I would say it in other words. Is it important? Is it necessary? Or rather, after knowing the shape, perhaps we settle that the shape is round. What is it to me? What is it to you? What is it to the sinner in the world who is lost? What is it to the prostitute in the streets? What is it to the drunkard? What is it to the adulterous man? Was it to the man who is kept in spiritualism? After identifying the shape of the earth, what is it to a sinner who is lost in the world? What is it to a prodigal son? That is the whole issue to me. Okay, we can spend all the time, uh, 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 I, mean, I mean, unraveling, opening up what the earth looks like. We can go to the scripture, we can go to science, we can be able to bring images that have been shot from different angles and different places and different altitudes, and that's all right. But the question is, when we finally settle on the old concept that, yes, science has proved it to be this, and this is true science. So the question is, what value does it add to the life of a sinner that is seeking to know Jesus Christ? Should I go from place to place preaching the message of the shape of the earth as the three angels' messages, as the burden of the message for this time? That is it. I mean, for me, it boils down to what is the objective, the purpose of the message I preach? So that if I am talking about the message of who God is, I must have an objective of why I want people to understand who God is. And that objective should be to help them have an experience with Jesus Christ, where he is in the most holy place and perfect Christian character. If I am talking about of the health message, if I perhaps I'm talking about the message of this old, uh, this old subject, that is where it all begins for me. So I will be convinced, very convinced, if I was given the objective, if the objective 
is that it will be able to help me to become more like Jesus Christ, then it's a subject that's worth pushing, is worth studying, is worth praising, and is worth being preached as part of the third angel's message. I don't know what you think about, about this whole concept, but that's what I want to just give as my opening uh, remarks in regard to this. Um, I want to open uh, this so that I don't be the one speaking. I'm basically a moderator today. And uh, what do you say about the shape of the earth? Is it salvational? Should we withdraw fellowship from those who see differently from us? This is uh, the conversation we are to have today. You can raise your hand if you're interested in saying something. This is an open discussion. Only that we're asking to be respectful to, uh, uh, to other brethren who see differently from you. Uh, let me see if there is someone who has an, an idea. Okay, perhaps there seems to be none who has an idea about this, so <laughs> I don't know if it will be a study or something of that sort, but that's the whole concept. You know, sometimes if, if I do a study, it will be my mind, and that is why we have an opportunity for every person to share what they think is their belief, what they see from the scripture, the spirit of prophecy. Good evening, uh, Brother Zadok and the others. Good evening, Karibu Sana Sami. And uh, we thank the Lord. Okay, Brother brother Angasa, you are saying something? I was just greeting you back. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's, it's nice to... It's nice to be here and uh, uh, speak about... Uh, uh, these things, and uh, I'd like to say just uh, to bring out something that uh, the belief that the world is flat actually found its origin centuries ago. This is not a new thing, but uh, a resurgence of uh, the flat atheism occurred in uh, uh, back in England in 1849, and this was with uh, a publication of a little book. Uh, which was called uh, Zetetic uh, uh, Astronomy. And uh, a description of several experiments which prove that the surface of the sea is a perfect plane and uh, the earth is not globe, writing. And uh, this was under the, the plane name of Parallax by uh, a brother called Samuel Bailey, Rome Botman. He was uh, devoted in actually attacking the theory of uh, spherical art. Now, when uh, this matter arose in 1849, many people joined in the footsteps of this thing, including uh, traveling Seventh-day Adventists in the late 1880s, promoting the theories uh, of uh, Brother Samuel Bailey uh, in New York and New England regions. And so, Two of our ministers, that is uh, Brother Wilcox and uh, Brother Brown, actually started preaching about this thing. And uh, it uh, reached into the ears of E.G. White. And when it reached in the ears of E.G. White, uh, E.G. White had to write something to Brother Brown uh, from, uh, from Switzerland in uh, 1887. And uh, it is interesting to follow these stories, what she writes to Brother Brown, and maybe we can look into these histories and see what was it. E.G. White told uh, Brother Brown that uh, I learned by letters from New York that Brother Brown has accepted, is now preaching the flat world theory. Is it possible that uh, this theory has been brought by Brother Wilcox from England that you have accepted it and are teaching it. And then she goes ahead and tells uh, Brother Brown 
that our work is to teach the third angel's message, which means the question you are asking if the, uh, the flat earth theory is part of the three angels message, PG White doesn't see that because he says that I hear that you are teaching the flat earth theory, but our work as Seventh day Adventist is to, uh, uh, to teach the third angel's message. And then she goes ahead and tells uh, uh, Elder Brown that uh, stick to the message, that is the third angel's message, which means, uh, Brother uh, Zado, that it nullifies the theory that the flat earth theory. It is the third angel's message, and uh, I mean this in a respectful way. And so, uh, again, she goes ahead and tells uh, Brother Wilcox that uh, really this undermines really the third angel's message to get hold of hobbies, to stick to things that you better have let alone be. And so, E.G. Uh, uh, White, actually writing to Wilcox, she tells Wilcox that uh, any kind of theory or hobby that Satan can lead the minds of men to dwell upon, he will draw their attention to, so that they shall not be engaged in giving the solemn message for this time. So this is not the solemn message of this time, the flat earth theory. And then she tells Brother Wilcox in 1887, that uh, do not, my brother, become entangled with the ideas that have no connection with the work for this time. It is better to be teaching the truth as it is in Jesus, better to be seeking for true goodness, heart holiness, uh, freedom from, from all selfishness, freedom from all envies and uh, uh, jealousies. And uh, this you can read in letter 43 in 1887, where she ends her letter to Brother Wilcox by saying, I hope, Brother Wilcox, you, you will be truly converted. This is the great need at the present time. And the Lord wants meekness, he wants humility, he wants genuine piety. And without it, he is sounding a brass and tingling symbol. His soul and your soul should need the dwelling of Jesus. Whether the world is round or flat will not save a soul, but whether men believe and obey means everything. And so, whether a man believes a world is round or flat, it will never save a soul, but believing the truth of the three angels' message will save a person, or if the person doesn't believe in the three angels' message, then the person will be lost. There is a, a particular quote that uh, she again puts in, in the book Gospel Workers, uh, of 1915, page 314, paragraph one, where uh, actually she warns the dangers of entertaining the uh, flat or round theory. She goes ahead and says to the gospel ministers, this is a book mainly written to the gospel workers. When at a time a brother came to me with the message that the world is flat, I was instructed to present the commission that Christ gave his disciples Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And she quotes Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And lo, I am with you and always, even unto the end. In regard to such a subject as the flat world theory, God says to every soul, What is that to thee? Follow thou me. I have given you your commission. Dwell upon the great testing truth for this time, not upon matters that have no bearing upon our work. And so we see the tenor of uh, uh, we see the tenor of uh, of uh, E.G. White not being a tenor that uh, really puts a supposition that uh, the world is flat or is round at this point, but again she doesn't say uh, that. Uh, this is a testing truth for the time. And uh, in subsequent messages, in, uh, 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 in subsequent messages in eight, from 1849, uh, when the brothers started really uh, talking about the flat or the round theory, James White also had to come out uh, 
publicly in Adventist Review and Sabbath Herald. And he says that uh, the honest deacon who believes the world flat and immovable may be just as a good Christian, as devotional in all his exercises, and as godly in his work as one that believes otherwise. Such a faith or such an error has little or nothing to do with religion or practical godliness because it neither denies the necessity nor want of atonement. But such a subject should be not put at the forefront to unsettle the people in the messages of the time. Now you hear they are saying that there is a message of the time. There is the three angels messages to be preached, but the flat earth theory is not something that the gospel worker should put in forefront in agitating them. And so uh, this is something that uh, really when you look at it and uh, it is bearing on atonement and what we are told in early writing uh, page 63 that uh, there are so many truths contained in the word of God, but it is the present truth that the flock needs. I saw that the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days are calculated to explain our position as Seventh-day Adventists and confirm the doubting in the past, the present, and the future, and in the faith and the commandments of, of, of the Lord. And so you find that um, the flat or round theory has no bearing at all with the three angels' messages. And it is not something that uh, uh, I, I believe from uh, Sister White's writing and from the um, uh, from the pioneers that it is something that should be put at forefront and uh, should be bringing division among his brothers so that uh, when we look at each other, we see each other as animals that uh, cannot correlate together. This is my submission on your opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sami, and uh, I am so thankful for that submission. I would wish to ask uh, uh, rather <coughs> um, inquire from us. Um, is Ellen White inspired on this matter? Because this is another question that has always I mean, risen every time this discussion is held. Every time brethren are discussing about the matter of the shape of the earth, there is always this idea that the pioneers, Ellen White herself, was not inspired. She wrote out of inspiration. And, and so my next question will be, how do, we, how do we go about identifying which of the subjects she was inspired to write and which of the subjects she was not inspired to write on? Uh, I think that is something that I want to uh, have us think about because I know that there might be a little bit of quotation here and there from Sister Ellen White. Yesterday, we talked about the edges in the spirit of prophecy and we established a confidence in the spirit of prophecy as, as well as we established a confidence, as much as we established also the confidence in the Bible as the, our creed and uh, the source of all reforms and doctrine. But the question is, is she inspired to speak about this matter or she, is she off in terms of true science? Because it is said that um, the true science says this, and this is what false science says. So the question I'm asking is, is Ellen White inspired on this matter? Is she someone we can hear out in this matter and read out with confidence that what she's telling us is true, especially when we come to a point where the Bible verses are interpreted differently by not, not really that they are not giving Bible verses. Both sides are actually giving Bible verses but the whole concept of different interpretation of different Bible verses can be resort to Ellen White as an inspired person. That is, that is one of the questions that uh, we need to be asking ourselves. Is she inspired on this? I want to hear someone say something about that. Someone who has something to say about the inspiration of Ellen White about this subject.
because that 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 is the key issue i mean if you are able to find out if she's inspired on this matter perhaps uh perhaps that will be helpful so that we can either choose to freely quarter on this matter or choose not to quarter is the voice of ellen white in this matter a voice to continue speaking in god's church is it to be hard or are we to completely banish our writings when it comes to this matter that that is because it has been stated in the past that ellen white did not have light on this subject and that's why i'm asking up to what extent do we uh delineate and and perhaps say that to this extent she has light to this extent she doesn't have light or the moment her ideas conflict with our ideas then she doesn't have light in regard to that matter uh, as at that time remember as at yesterday we were we were all having the thought that the two offices of a prophet by a prophet the israelites were brought out of egypt and that is very important you realize that they had the the the, 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 the chronicles the the, the 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 books i mean the the, the, the commandments but god still used um, a prophet uh, the ministry of a prophet was very important in the bringing out of israel out of egypt but also by a prophet they were preserved including after the death of moses they were preserved by the ministry of uh, spiritual prophecy and writings of moses we were able to see that they were basically um, wrapped in and they were also in the most holy place and they were put on the side of the ark and they were very important for the direction um, uh, that the children of israel were to follow and we can actually see that we said yesterday in the reformation that is actually started by josiah that actually that reformation is brought about by the tracing or retracing of the book of the law uh, which are actually the uh, things that God was able to show Moses and were written down for instruction of the Israelite. So I think in the same sense that, that the office of a prophet in the end time church is very important and we can see it clearly in the book of Revelation, which is uh, uh, a beautiful apocalyptic book that shows us the prophecies of the end time. And it clearly shows that the remnant people will keep the commandments of God, they'll have the testimony of Jesus Christ and they'll have the faith of jesus christ so basically we can see that the testimony of jesus christ is just a testing truth for seventh day adventist church and it's one of the pillar pillars of our faith which is very important a pillar that we cannot go without accepting that god has spoken to us in these last days also uh of course through jesus christ but christ doesn't walk literally down here christ uses the ministry of his ministering angels but the ministering angels are as brethren to the prophets and so they use prophets as it is in revelation to the one and i mean angels use prophets that then give the message to the people i think that there is also a danger if we as a people who claim to be the end time um uh, movement or whatever you call yourself wherever you are uh, there, there is nothing much in the name but as long as you believe you are a present truth believer and seeking to establish people back to uh, what I call the foundational truth of Seventh-day Adventists, it, it will be very dangerous to begin isolating which sections or segments of the spirit of prophecy are inspired and which ones are not inspired. Because anything that is false which is not inspired of God, for God does not speak lie it's in the book of titus i lie not it's in the book of numbers and so i think it's important for us to see the danger when actually we take the position that ellen white is not inspired remember that one of the i mean one of the um what i would call mark characteristic of uh the people will be shaken out is they will make of none effect the spirit of prophecy And so the spirit of prophecy is uh, uh, to God's people. So I think that is something that, that we need to think about. The spirit of prophecy, uh, what is it to us as God's people? Is it something that we hold as a treasure or is it something that we can pick when we need? 
So I think the whole concept that Ellen White is not inspired on this is not right. And I'll be able to prove a little in a, a short while why I believe that she is inspired on this because you'll be able to find quotations from the spirit of prophecy where she categorically mentions that it is God who was showing her these things. I don't know if someone has something, perhaps before I, I, I show that's good and Brother Sami could project it. Let me check it out. Let me perhaps come in. Go ahead, Brother Patrick. Um, before I, before I, I, I address what um, you are just asked, I would like to thank God, first of all, for, for the historical bit that Brother Sami shared. Uh, as one who came to the truth via study of history, uh, my first teacher who shared with me the gospel shared from the history pers perspective, and it became very easy for me to see the thing. So I really appreciate the historical bit that Brother Sami has shared. Uh, secondly, it's on the point um, um, on, re on relationship with brethren who might hold um, uh, either views. Um, one of my of the things I've noticed is that when people have certain ideas that are new, they somehow they somehow will want to make them a test when they ought not to be. I relate that to the issue of um, of the daily, the question of the daily. From the historical beat is that those who had the correct view of the daily never wanted to make it a test but those who had the wrong view of the daily um were desirous and most solicitous to make it a test um so if we can just leave it at where the prophet left it um and focus really on the three angels message on the everlasting gospel on John 3.16, which for me captures the three angels message in completeness, for me that will be enough. So maybe the caution to all of us on this matter is that there's no point. I know there are those who strongly oppose the flat earth theory, and when they get a brother who's on the flat earth theory, they want to cause a conversation about it, and then a circle begins and all that. So I will prefer the prophet's way. The prophet says, hey, what has this matter got to do? with the three angels message. What has it got to do to conversion, really? So mm -hmm. if, if we take it that way, and these brothers will be more willing to focus on winning souls for Christ, then even one who's totally persuaded on that end, we've just had James White say, hey, we don't take you as, um, as one who's a cast, but um, it will be much better if the person so persuaded will not make it uh, the subject everywhere because it doesn't help. Neither is the correct view on this matter, uh, that, um, uh, the spherical view, I've never bothered to search this matter such much, but as soon as I knew there was a controversy I, and I read what the prophet is saying, even uh, as I was searching it and I realized if I say this, it will cause this and that. So I said, hey, let's focus on the gospel. Now, on the bit of inspiration, I've never understood um, when friends come up with the idea, is Sister White inspired or not? For well, sometimes I even ask, um, were the pioneers themselves inspired or not? Or what is to be inspired? I always, I always ask the first question. When you say, was Sister White inspired or not? I ask the question, what is to be inspired? Because I'll ask, was James White inspired? I'll ask, was um, Joseph Bait inspired? And just one thought on that matter. Um, Sister White somewhere says, uh, I think it is in um, Councils to Editors and Writers. Um, the early pages, she'd say of the pioneers that men wrote as they were moved by the Spirit. Men wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, I normally ask, is that inspiration or what? But for me, that's inspiration anyway. So, on the question of Sister White, um, inspiration on this matter, I will, I will answer this way. Prophets of God were always walking together with God, save the times when perhaps they doubted or something like that. 
uh, we know we know there's a time Elijah doubted, but prophets of God were always walking with God. They were always walking with all the angels by their side. But it's not always that they were in vision. Sometimes they were in vision. Sometimes they were not in vision. Now, I know of friends who have spoken about Paul and even James and questioning the inspiration of James. I don't know whether they go ahead and question the inspiration of Paul, but kindly may I invite everyone to uh, just to, I read a, a few scriptures here, two or three verses, uh, when Paul was addressing the subject of virgins and marriage and um, divorce or something like that, or how uh, one can live with, um, with one who is not a Christian and they found themselves in such a matter because when they were in ignorant, I'm not speaking of people who did those things uh, in knowledge. So if you can read with me 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I just read three verses and end there. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 6, I read verse 6. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. So just, just hear that. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. I jump, I go to verse 10. And unto the married I command yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. I jump to verse 12. But to the rest I speak, not the Lord, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Finally, verse 25 of the same chapter. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Now listen to what Paul is saying there. As concerning to virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment. Yet I give my judgment. So Paul is giving his own judgment. As one that had obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Now, if a brother came up and said uh, when Paul was writing using his own judgment there, judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord, that that is not inspired, uh, as some have said, I think some have suggested out there, then um, I don't know what to say because a man who has obtained God's mercy, when he's giving judgment, that judgment will be aligned to the word of God such that um, you will not question that. Because when we are saying, when we say he is in, if we said Paul was not here inspired, then, you know, inspiration is of two. Inspired of God's mind or inspired of Satan's mind. So, we must suggest anytime we say this one is not inspired, we'll be suggesting that Paul was speaking with the agency of demons. And so if we will say Sister White on any matter was not inspired, we will be saying um, that he was, she was speaking from the enemy's mind. And so for me, um, um, the servant of God, um, will not be uh, whatever when when they, they express their own judgment speaking things as people obtain mercy from God and not against scriptures I don't think we can speak of trying to nitpick and say this one is inspired that one is not I while some messages will be received direct from visions some will be as someone is chewing the word and has angels by his side then Without even the visions, they are able to speak the word of God. And that's how I'll say the pioneers were able to understand doctrine um, without visions in certain cases because they were still inspired. If we get inspiration in the big sense, not meaning always in vision and only communicating that which is received in vision. Yeah, so I will end there. God's grace. Thank you, Brother Patrick, for bringing up that. And I would just want to share this. I don't know if someone else has an idea. Wait, just I, lift up your I wanted to say something, please, Brother Zaro. Go ahead. And Go I know ahead. probably you do have the message. Uh, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if we start from verse 30, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 30, all the way to 33, it, it reads this. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by let the first hold his peace, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may, may learn, and all may be comforted. Then verse 32, 
and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of, of the saints. If I was to read that, really it is the inspiration or the spirit of God speaking through Paul, telling us that God is not the author of confusion. If somebody has offered himself totally to the Lord and is speaking in the name of the Lord, allowing the Lord to use him truly, then God will not be the author of confusion. Because if you were to look at that explanation from Acts of the Apostles, I believe it's page 96, paragraph one, I, it's, it's starting from about the third sentence. He says, he desires his work to be carried forward with thoroughness and exactness so that he may place upon it the seal of his approval. And I believe the seal of his approval is really the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is the same anointing that was given to Christ when Christ was being baptized by John, of which John also does testify that in John chapter three, that it is him who has been sealed by God. And it is through God's spirit sealing Christ into his work, being manifested by what he did, um, healing people, raising the dead, and doing all these things. So if you were to really look at Ellen White and start questioning, I know it is really a debate, questioning whether she was inspired or not. If we were to look at what she did in relation to what Christ was doing and the words, whether they do uh, relate or they are coinciding, there is no uh, conflict between the two, we will not really believe or think that she was not inspired because um, I believe that quote that you're looking for is in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, page 691, paragraph 2, which she really does say that God inspired her. If I was to read, if you would allow me, God has marked has given me a marked solemn experience in connection with this work. And you may be assured that so long as my life is spared, I shall not cease to lift a warning voice as I am impressed by the spirit of God, whether men will hear or whether they will forbear. I have no special wisdom in myself. I am only an instrument in the Lord's hands to do the work. That's why I was saying, if you're really going to allow yourself wholly, totally to be used by the spirit of God, then the spirit's anointing will really give you or will make the words that you will speak because you're really a conduit. You have become that channel, like as in Zechariah chapter four, you are the golden tube that is delivering the, of the golden oil. So he, she continues to say, the instruction that have given by pen or she has given by pen or voice have been an expression of the light that God has given me. So from the testimonies, I consider that she is inspired by the things that she has said because there is really no conflict between what she says. is or what she pens to the Bible. But I know there's like a lot of conflict around because of so many words that have been given by other people. So we can't really know so much. But as far as I am concerned by the testimonies given, I consider her to be inspired and thanks. Yeah, I, I thank you so much, brother. I, I'm so thankful for all the submissions. But I want to rightly represent what is being, um, what is being said. Many people who have uh, a say or uh, have a position in regard to the shape of the earth, especially those who believe the earth is flat, do not really say that the Ellen White is not inspired. They believe she's inspired, but they say she had no light. She had no light in regard to the flat earth. So one, we have to rightly represent them because this video is being watched on, on a public platform so that they, no one accuses anyone of misrepresentation. So really they are saying that Ellen White is inspired, but she didn't have light in, in this matter. Something that I basically don't agree with. 
for very good reason. So that is what I wanted us to understand. So they are not really saying she was not inspired, but she's saying she didn't have light in regard to the subject we are discussing today, which is why we are discussing this subject today. Because otherwise it would have been clear. It would have been clear because Ellen White is pretty clear on this matter. And so the only way to make it a little bit controversial and expand the discussion is to ensure that Ellen White does not have light on this matter. And as long as we say, hey, she doesn't have light on this matter, we can be sure that it will be a lengthy discussion. But the moment you just say, she has light on this matter, the discussion is ended, the conversation is ended because she will clear out the air, the mist in, in this discussion, which is really the big issue, especially with those who propose their view that the earth is flat against the view that the earth is, uh, um, is round, the globe. Of course, there's also a whole concept about whether they are, what the word globe means, but I wouldn't want to go to that for now. Is there any other thought? Okay, but even as we go through that, someone wants to speak. You are breaking, Brother Deacons. Wanted to. Are you there? I wanted to ask a question. Perhaps you could type your thought, and it would be helpful. Hello. Yes. Other question. Yes. Yeah, my question is this. Uh, since uh, I have gotten what Sami had read there since 1915, is there any truth that has come concerning this issue that we can say that uh, is more light than the light that Sister White, Sister White had by that time? Because I see by 1915, she is still maintaining that this is not the present truth. Is there anything that we can say that time that we are living now, it has become part of Grangel's messages uh, so that <clears throat> we can truly confirm that uh, she didn't have light? Thank you. Okay, I might not be able to answer that because my view is all different. But rightly understanding uh, what they are saying and answering by what they're saying, here is what I consider to be a direct, uh, straight uh, forward blow on that matter. Just a minute, and I'll be, I'll be up there. Just want to close a few windows here and try to share this. Look, um, I believe with all my heart because Sister White says in regard to such subjects as the flat world theory. Who says to every soul, it is God? So for me, when this whole question is raised that Ellen White has no light in regard to this, who is the source of all light? It's God through Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. And God says, it's not man. So Ellen White's not speaking just as any man. She, she here says, God says. So if we accuse Ellen White of having no light, then we must say that in this portion of our writings, she has wrongly accrued a, a matter which is from, as Brother Patrick said, and I, I really like the thought, you are either inspired of God or you are inspired of Satan. So if she, you either receive light from God or darkness and evil from Satan. So what really happens here is um, God says to every soul. So this is God, what is it to thee? So for me, this is Ellen White reporting what God says. What is it to thee? And says, follow thou me. I have given you your commission. Dwell upon the great testing truths for this time not upon matters that have no bearing upon our work. So who is the speaker? God, those words that are in quote, under the, I mean, uh, wrapped in by the 
curation, Mark's speech, are actually words that Ellen White is reporting as they are from God. It is God who says. So in regarding the flat earth subject, it is God who is speaking. In fact, Ellen White says elsewhere, I was instructed to say, say what? That this is not our, uh, this is not our message. It's not our burden. Who instructed that? Either you are instructed of God or you are instructed of Saturn. So I feel that for me, that settles the whole issue of whether she's inspired on this matter, <clears throat> whether she has light on this matter, because she directly, and like even the cases where now, uh, I, I would go into that because it's not a subject of discussion for now, but from the few verses that our brother was able to read, we are actually the apostle appears to be speaking his mind. Here, it's even clear that actually Ellen White's not speaking her mind. She's reporting what he said to us. She says that in regard to such subjects as the flat earth theory, God says to every single soul, what is it to thee? Follow thou me. And, and the, the real question is, flat or round, does it really matter? What is it to us? Is it, is it a conversation to be held? Is it a, an argument to be entered into? Is it perhaps, if I may speak uh, more openly, uh, uh, is it uh, a matter that should consume our time, our energy and resources going about preaching the shape of the earth? So for me, that's just my submission that by reading this, I see Clearly, unless there are times when God himself is not inspired by, <laughs> I don't even know how to put it, because God is the author of the Holy Spirit, it proceeds from him. It's the only mind of God. So I don't even want to, it will be confusing to say that God is not inspired. <laughs> in, in other words, God does not have a Holy Spirit at some times. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. So when we say God says, there are only two possibilities. Either Ellen White is saying what God did not say and accruing that to God, which is what is called blasphemy. Or there is a possibility that Ellen White is reporting the truth as it is given to her by God. So that settles for me the matter that she's inspired on this matter. But I would still say, I would still say that despite, uh, so I would say that despite all that, uh, the whole issue about the shape of the earth is not part of the gospel. The gospel that is given to us is the everlasting gospel. And the everlasting gospel is fear God, give God glory. Why? Because we are in the investigative judgment time. And Jesus Christ is the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Uh, brother, uh, that, can, can, you read the next, can you read the next paragraph after that, which is that 314.2? And it will really support what you just said right there. Um. I just closed it. Let me try find if I can oh, okay. to open. Okay. 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 Let me just uh, try seeing three hundred and fourteen paragraph two. Gospel workers. Three fourteen. Let's see what it it says. I will share my screen again, so that we're able to read together, as so brother say. Uh, we told workers for God should not spend time speculating as to what conditions will prevail in the new earth. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. It is a presumption to indulge in suppositions and theories regarding matters that the Lord has not revealed. He has made every provision for our happiness in the future life. And we are not to speculate regarding his plans for us, neither we to measure the conditions of the future life by the conditions of this life. Thank you.
All right, I, I'm not sure if there is any other thought, but I want to ask uh, because our time is running out. I want to ask another that, question. Just thing. Go just ahead, Prati. Um, I will really be interested with the <clears throat> documents or articles which Brother Sami made reference to, um, because I've been of the view that the church is not one person. That one, I'm like, the church is not Sister White, uh, because there are many who have made Sister White the church and have erred in that matter. The church, uh, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we read uh, Romans chapter 12, we read Ephesians chapter 4, the church is many members, uh, one body, Christ the head. Now, in that sense, um, it is important that we take note of what James White said, which sounds very similar with what Sister White said, both uh, speaking as of people have obtained mercy from God. Of course, Sister White will get visions, but James White was not a prophet in that sense, but he will speak the things of God. Now, my, uh, I will take the idea that Sister White, when we say Sister White is inspired about or has light in regards to the <clears throat> matter of flatness or roundness of the earth or sphere, sphere is called them, I don't know even how to say that. Um, I will take this, this is my understanding of what that means. It means, it doesn't mean that Sister White uh, was shown that the earth is not flat. That's not the point. Neither does it say that now Sister White was shown that the earth is round. No, but she's saying that in regarding to, to, to saying about flatness, it is nothing to concern us. Meaning that God has spoken to her, of course we know how God speaks to prophets, that seeking the fine details of that kind of matter does not help and it's better off staying away from such subjects. That's what I get. Not like now she's saying, no, the earth is not flat. That's not what the point is I'm getting there. The point is that subject is not useful. That subject will not save a soul. That subject, you're better off leaving it. It's not a subject to bring before the people. Not in the present time, not in the future. Because um, it doesn't help in the gospel. That's what I'm getting there. So that we, we are very fair on this matter. Not to say that, because I don't want to be put to the test to say, hey, prove that Sister White said the art is not flat and all that. That's not my point. My point is, Sister White says, don't speak of such subjects. They don't have, don't even enter into arguments with such subjects. Just leave them there and focus on that, which is the gospel. Finally, uh, I don't know what time we have. Sister White is encouraging that we speak in unity. Uh, you may check the book uh, on, on, on a book called Minds, Character, and Personality, a chapter called Fanaticism. If we check on that chapter, you will see how Sister White is saying, try to harmonize with the brain. You'll just, you can just, anyone can, everyone can go and check that, uh, that, that, that passage. Try to harmonize with the brethren. Avoid things that look very strange and uh, trying to look very fine and smart and all that so that you speak together with the brethren so that we may work together in the gospel. Those are my thoughts. Thank, thank you, Brother Patrick. Brother Brian. Uh, this is uh, interesting. Who's a... Go ahead, Brian, you are muted. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm saying, see the Sabbath school lesson for this week, not for this week, for last week rather, which was uh, the lesson that was done in 1888. And you know, the whole of councils on Sabbath school work tells us how we need to study our Sabbath school lesson. It was not primarily dealing with the shape of the earth, but it was explaining some things, not the lesson, the scripture texts that we are reading from there were explaining some things about the creation that clearly will prove that the earth is not flat. And in the writings of Sister White herself in, uh, in uh, education, she says it is not by its own inherent power that year by year the earth goes around the sun. Elsewhere, she says, the Sabbath is made for a round world. So while it is true that uh, 
it is something that you not take our time and attention and whoever wants to believe it is flat it is he can believe it but i believe if we believe what sister white say, wrote then clearly we know that it is not flat because there's no way i can read that it is round and then i say it is flat because it is something that is <clears throat> so plainly stated to be mistaken only that it is it has no bearing on our salvation thank you thank you thank you brother brian and it's like holding <laughs> holding a piece of stone and asking its shape when it's a shape that has not been invented but really uh you're able to tell that it's not this and it is this or if it's a shape that we have and we know is probably it's it's a circle or it's a rectangle so um it it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter whether it's a circle or a rectangle but there is also the point there that it can be truly a rectangle so I, I guess that what, what Brother Brian is trying to say is we can't also read what Ellen White is saying and say it's not the thing and it doesn't matter. But the issue here is it's not salvational. I think that is as far as uh, I also understand the whole concept, because what happens in the conversation with uh, our brethren who believe um, otherwise on the issue of uh, the art that is the art is flat is they they strongly uh, believe that Ellen White is not inspired because of the way she uses those words and as long as we say that it's not important the next question will be what do you do when you are reading it because we don't read for the sake of sliding over the messages we read to understand what she's saying and she has basically mentioned a fact there about the shape of the earth, but she says that fact is nothing in regard to the truth that we should be preaching at this hour. And that's basically, that's basically my understanding. But you see, as we continue studying, we'll understand why this is important. Uh, because the next question that will come is in regard to um, Genesis chapter 1 because the whole concept of Genesis chapter one has also been uh, brought in, in in many studies. Uh, our understanding of Genesis chapter one, which is actually interpreted as the foundation of the gospel, that for you, everything originates from Genesis chapter one. But uh, does our, uh, the early church, the church of the pioneers uh, have a truth about this matter uh, regarding the shape of the earth and is their position to be respected or rather is it biblical that uh, if i would say that that's another thing that we need to be talking about just to be able to to find out what's the truth hello brother zado yes sami uh thank you so much for the submissions that have been made so far. I, I, I will say that uh, it's like uh, we are trying to prove the earth is round or is flat somehow and uh, put those who say that uh, the earth is flat on uh, a corner. But uh, I don't want to oppose what has been submitted, but uh, I, I like to bring this one to in to us in another angle. Uh, I'd like us to see this. This is from MS 26-1901. And uh, if God willing, we shall have uh, just uh, a whole lesson of two hours on inspiration of E.G. White and the pioneers, maybe in the coming sessions, if we have time. We will even create time before the week ends. Christ says that there will be those in church who will present fables and suppositions, suppositions when God has given grand elevating ennobling truths, which should ever be kept in the treasure house of the mind. 
when men pick up this theory and that theory, you know the, the, the issue that the earth is round or flat is a theory. And now she's speaking about theories. When men pick up the, this theory and that theory, when they are curious to know something, it is not necessary for them to know. God is not leading them. It is not his plan that his people shall present something which they have to suppose, which is not taught in the word. It is not his will that they shall get into control over questions which will not help them spiritually, such as who is to compose the 144,000? I want just to pick from these two quotes that I'm going to read and come back to the flat earth theory. So the issue of who will compose the 144,000, it's not something that is going to save somebody, but the character of the 144. Tell them this question Christ would have told us if it were essential for our souls, salvation to know. These, those who are the elect of God will in a short time know without question, and she's speaking about when Jesus Christ is coming uh, the second time. Another quote she really adds on that is uh, the next one in 1907, when she is just about to go out this word. Persons in writing or speaking to me often ask me questions that I have no liberty to answer. One says, I want you to tell me, Sister White, who are the 144,000 that are spoken of in Revelation? I answer, you have the word. Have you found out? If the Lord wanted you to know, he would have put it in his word and you will not need ask me. When we get to heaven, then we shall learn exactly who composed the 144,000. Let us take that which the Lord has given us. It is sufficient to tax our mind to its uttermost capacity. And if we will study the scriptures prayerfully, the Holy Spirit will make the correct application to our heart. So take these two quotes about 144,000, saying that it is not something to go wrangling about and uh, 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 really pushing ourselves about and then apply the same principle with uh, these quotations now. Apply with uh, the next quotations on uh, around flat earth. I want just to be sober on everything. Look at this now and remember what we have read about 144. And if we will take her inspiration on 144 and leave the question of 144 alone, then we should carry the same principle to the flat or uh, uh, round earth theory. And she called the 144 knowing it a theory that has not been revealed in the word of God. I see people really, uh, really pushing themselves about the issue and they are not really concerned with the character. Let us come back now to the flat earth and the round earth. Any kind of a theory or hobby that Satan can lead the minds of men to dwell upon, he will draw their attention to so that they shall not be engaged in giving the solemn message for this time. So flat or round is no message for this time. And this is 1887 when they were expecting Jesus Christ to come around in two or three years. Do not, my brother, become entangled with ideas that have no message for this time, uh, have no connection with the work for this time. It is better to be teaching the truth as it is in Jesus. Better to be seeking for true godliness, heart holiness, freedom from all selfishness, freedom from all envies and jealousies. It is better to pray and humble uh, the soul before God and let the world round or flat be just as God has made it. Take that principle of 144, apply to that. And then the next uh, uh, thing, it is in 1904, that was in 1887, but now here is 1904 again, the question comes to her again to explain about the flat and round earth theory. And she says, I had one person come up to me and want me to give information about a round or flat world, said I. I have no such a burden on my soul at all. 
I have nothing to say to you or to anybody else about a round or a flat world. What we want is a round character. We have altogether too much of a flat character. In fact, this is irony that actually Sister White is speaking here. Somebody is asking, give me information on flat or round world. And then she turns the thing up, upside down and she's saying, what we need is a round character. We have been having a flat character. Can you, can you imagine how the person felt at that moment if he's not mature about this thing? We have altogether too much of a flat character. What we want is a round character. We have altogether too much of a flat character. It's like God is mincing either her word or revealing something to her that if a person who is keen will understand what Sister White is talking about and what God is inspiring her to give to that person answer. And we want now to think of building a character that shall be round and perfect as our father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And we want that every talent that you have should be in exercise, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth that you may go forth and what says Christ. Teach them all things about around world. No, that I have commanded you. That is what we are to teach. Teach the lesson that Christ gave in his life uh, practice. And then uh, this is the catalyst uh, and the crux of the matter. She goes ahead and continues uh, to say that uh, let those who are presenting theories. So he says there are theories as to whether the earth is round or flat. Leave this question for God has not given it to them to solve and honestly inquire what shall I do that I may have everlasting life now this is the challenge I'm giving myself and to everyone who is watching and listening have God revealed to you the earth is round or the earth is flat when the prophet is saying it has not give, been given to men to solve the issue that the earth is not flat or round let us, and uh, Brian has brought about the question of uh, the earth was given for, uh, uh, the, the Sabbath was given for a round world, and you have some quotations about uh, uh, the earth uh, in education moving around, and uh, those are nice quotes. Personally, I don't support a flat earth theory, and personally, I don't go teaching about around, the, uh, around earth theory, because at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, how is it connected to the sanctuary message? Maybe somebody may bring in the Genesis uh, uh, story that um, really uh, it will mess up with the Genesis story and uh, make uh, the creation uh, uh, the creation story uh, of non effect, and uh, that that will be a good argument. But now narrow it down. How actually it has to do with sanctification that is uh, with the twenty three hundred days and the cleansing of the sanctuary the keeping of the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And you will find yourself that uh, you are stuck in a corner to explain such a things. Uh, uh, and so this is what uh, some of the quotes that you brethren uh, are reading. And uh, there, there are some nice quotes to be considered. And uh, sometimes we talk about uh, leaning on the weight of the evidence. What is the weight of the evidence? What did the pioneer say and what did the E.G. White say about the issue? She never says that uh, the earth was flat, but she continuously says that uh, round earth, round earth. And uh, this is the quote that uh, Brian gave out in our uh, education. Uh, uh, um, is it page 59, but originally is found in MS4, 1882, that uh, the earth produces its boundaries and the world keeps up. It is continual march around the sun. And then, uh, MS 21, 18, 8, 8, 8, 7, that uh, uh, actually they were not to, call, to confine their labors to their own home or to their own country, but they were to widen until it should compass the whole globe. Letter 44, 18, uh, 94, actually she repeats again the uh, place of the globe and then the mysterious hand guiding the globe in its mysterious march around the sun. And she speaks about globe over and over and over. And so, you will find that the weight of the evidence uh, lies in her uh, about round and globe, but the burden is not to prove to anyone anything because she doesn't see any salvific matter in it. 
It is better to pray and humble the soul before God and let the world round or flat be just as God made it. Better lead the flock of God to drink at the higher streams. Better by precept and example seek God while he may be found. Another quote, she tells uh, Sister Will, uh, Brother Wilcox, which I read earlier, that Wilcox must be converted. Whether the world is round or flat will not save a soul, but he needs to be converted. Converted on what? Of his lack of humility and genuine piety. But whether the earth is flat or round, let him just leave it as it is because it has nothing to do with his salvation. And so a man comes again, and this was not once, but uh, I think it is three times when she, where she mentions different men coming to him to inquire about whether the earth is flat or uh, uh, round. And then she finally says that silence was eloquence upon that question, whether the, uh, the earth was flat or round. She didn't want to enter in which, uh, on which side or, or of the controversy uh, of the matters that uh, we are talking about. And uh, then she, 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 she tells uh, th this uh, something that she says uh, about those who are really, this is, I think, something that should settle all of our views on whether the, uh, the, the, we should discuss or uh, make the, the issue of the flood or uh, world around world is of much importance. She says, let those who are presenting theories as to whether the earth is round or flat, leave this question for God has not given them to solve and honestly inquire, what shall I do that I may have everlasting life? And so on the both sides of equation, whether round or flat and you want to present it, leave it alone. If you have found the truth, whether it is flat or round, believe it with your family if you will or teach it to whoever you will teach in your circles without going to unsettle uh, the church to be divided into two on which side uh, they are on, on the issue of uh, whether the earth is flat or round. And then there was an article that appeared in defense of the faith, uh, the Sabbath on around world. Uh, and uh, uh, this one I can send to everyone, but uh, I, I just want to stop the submission there and uh, say that, uh, if uh, the gospel minister, and this was being addressed to gospel ministers because it was not even being addressed to church uh, members, but to gospel ministers who are going around with the burden of the three angels message, leave the issue alone. It is not what the Lord has sent you to do, preach the three angels messages. The question about 144,000 who composes it, the flat or round theory, the same principles applies to the same question. Let it not be agitated among us gospel people so that people may see people in the public, gospel ministers who are standing on the same pulpit, preaching the message and going at each other as if God has not given them three angels messages. You believe the earth is round? Well and good. Make sure that your character is well. You believe it is flat? Okay. Have your character right with God, but don't agitate it among us God's people. It is not the message of Adventists. This is what the prophet really says, and I hope that uh, we have ears to listen. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Brother Sami, uh, 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 for the submission and the rest of us. Um, indeed, uh, uh, the matter uh, uh, is being settled, and I feel that I, I, I share and I have shared always uh, uh, with you about this, the, the, sub, the, the matter as is brought out by you is that um, as Sister White says, uh, that there is a weight of evidence that lies towards the truth that she says uh, it is round or it's a globe, but we can always say, what is it to us anyway? It's, it's, it, it is not salvational. Um, uh, it's not salvational. So I am thankful uh, indeed for that submission. Brother Brian, before we, we, we go for finally to the question of fellowship, uh, Brother Brian, yeah, just a minute. Time. Brother Zadok, can you uh, just very, give me very one brief, minute? Very brief. Can you give because, me one minute? Uh, we have 20 minutes and Brother Brian also wants to speak. So I'm giving you a very, very short time. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Uh, please, thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to read this and uh, leave Brian alone. Uh, and um, uh, the rest uh, uh, 
this is uh, what um, uh, the quote that we are talking about. In every place are God's memorials of his Sabbath, because people can ask, uh, where did you get that Sister White wrote that the Sabbath was uh, given for around world? 1900, uh, letter 167, in every place are God's memorials of his Sabbath and of his glory in creating the heavens and the earth. God rested on the seventh day and set it apart for man to observe in honor of his creation of the heavens and the earth in six literal days. He blessed and sanctified and made holy the day of rest. When men are so careful to search and dig to see in regard to the precise period of time, we are to say God made his Sabbath for a round world. And when the seventh day comes to us in that round world, controlled by the sun that rules the day, it is the time in all countries and lands uh, to observe the Sabbath. In the countries where there is no sunset for months and again no sunrise for months, the period of time will be calculated by records kept. But God has a world large enough and proper and right for human, the human beings he has created to inhabit it without finding homes in those lands so objection, obje, objectionable in very many ways. And so thank you, Brother Zadok, for giving me that time. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sami. Uh, Brother Brian, please. Oh, the, <clears throat> I'd like to ask a question. Go ahead. If the only way for me to believe that the world is flat is to say Ellen White was not inspired, then does this subject still remain non-salvational? Uh, ask that again, Brother Bran. <laughs> if the only way for me to believe that the earth is flat is to say Ellen White was not inspired, at least on uh, those quotes that she says, then can we still say that this subject is not salvational? When clearly we see that whoever believes that it is flat, there's damage that is being done to his beliefs. Brother, brother Brian, <laughs> brother Brian, uh, that is the danger. That is the danger because it it it, te it takes us back to what we were discussing yesterday. For if 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 like for what you are discussing yesterday, that if for us to believe that God is one we must say Ellen White's writings were tampered with and all these things. If the only way we can say that uh, this is this is to always find fault with the Bible or the spirit of prophecy, then it, it's, it's, it's another level of thing. I mean, I mean, we cannot simply say it's not salvational. It's, it's a bigger issue from, from what I'm saying, because you are asking a very important question. If, the only way that I have to believe that uh, uh, that I have in order to believe that the earth is flat is to say that Ellen White is not inspired or has no light in this matter, then the question will go back. Do we still believe that the remnant has a prophet and the prophet still speaks? Are we still on the platform because the pioneer church believed that she was inspired as much as they studied the Bible? They believed that they had a prophet and none of them claimed that office, including the husband of Sister Ellen White, Ura Smith, Logborough, and all those other guys. So I think, I think that that's a question that many of us would, would want to say something about. May I say something? Go ahead. Um, I have read um, in two instances where Sister White wrote to James and uh, James White and uh, John Andrews, somewhere I can't pick it, where um, I think John Andrews was trying to push a lot the matter of the art being a globe, trying to write letters to everybody responding to T.M. Preble, who had rejected the Sabbath. And um, uh, by trying to prove the earth was globe and that the Sabbath could be such, um, in such a manner be celebrated everywhere on the earth, then Sister White wrote to Jane telling him, hey, stop that, leave that man alone. And 
she was like saying you're becoming sick and uh, fanatical about the whole matter and to james white um at some point he had something very exquisite and excellent that was truthful but sister white told james white hey you you didn't know to push it um um even if it was true you don't need to push it but now on the question which brother brian has asked i will still ask uh, that we check on what the white says about how to press together personally i will not wish to box a brother to 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 such extent that um um he will have to believe he, he will have to feel that i'm pushing them beyond what i um beyond what he, really i should say that means we cannot make this matter a test but we by kindness and softness of language tell a brother hey don't cherry pick don't try to say sister white is inspired here on there don't say those things now if you really believe the art is flat and that's what you believe somehow now let it never be for any moment uh trying to question the inspiration of sister white because what sister white has said on the subject is very clear her position is clear but she is so magnanimous in her position that we who today are persuaded that it is round must not go beyond what she did it will we will be demonstrating a different spirit uh, from she was confident in a way that it is globe it's round but look at what she's saying when a brother comes to them look there's the general speaking where she's expressing her views but then there is when people have written letters to her and now what was the response to everyone who was asking on that matter sister white was like hey this does not this should not concern us we should not even for a moment say that we are we are trying to prove it round or flat yes i'm sister white i have my own mind on this matter i believe the lord has taught me on this but i'm not going to push you to believe it for salvation but i'll let you have your view only that keep it to yourself it's not salvational don't go putting it on the pulpit don't create a chat and whatsapps or facebook arguments on it no just keep it and per adventure god will um convict your mind in future to drop it i don't know personally i can't say what i ever believed about it but i know once i started sharing a little bit and then i was people were hinting a uh, breath and my hinting in good faith hey, you could be speaking of flat earth i never knew even about flat earth but as i was trying to type what the bible says in there then people alerted me this is what the prophet said i left the matter so um um and i in fact for me while i appreciate what the prophet has said and it is true i will not seek to satisfy my mind that it is ground or flat i will never seek to satisfy my mind but i'll take what the prophet has said i take that is i'm not going to investigate it because i don't think the prophet is here calling me to go and investigate and prove for sure and be for certain it's round no and and if we take it that way and ask the brethren who might want to make a controversy out of it just to leave it and to just to leave it i think that's the best way to handle this matter god's grace friends Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Brother Angas, and uh, I like your views, and uh, I, I really concur with uh, what our brethren are saying. Brother Brown has asked a very, very important question. If somebody starts doubting Sister White, shall this be made a test of fellowship? So the best person to answer that question is Sister White herself. We are not even in a position to answer that thing if it is what we should do. The right thing to do is consult sister white what do you say with the person who really goes against the counsel that you have given under inspiration and uh, it is always brethren good to quote sister white so that uh, it may not come out somebody said like that and i'll go straight to what she says about somebody who disperses with her counsel in answer to the question of uh, uh brother bram and um uh still agreeing with brother ngasa that uh, this is not an issue of fighting but uh, giving people a chance to develop their ideas so that you may see the character that comes with the ideas if you see somebody fathering something and then comes to a point that they want to fight with the people it means that whatever they are holding however true it is it is not sanctified to them and so it it's not something that should not be allowed but let sister white talk about how should we treat somebody who disagrees with the what she has said or the counsels to leave matters alone which has said that should be left alone some i was shown and this is one from testimonies to the church volume 1 page 328 some i was shown 
could receive the published visions, judging of the tree by its fruits. Others are like doubting Thomas. They cannot believe the published testimonies, nor receive evidence through the testimony of others, but must see and have the evidence for themselves. Such must not be set aside, but long patience and brotherly love should be exercised toward them until they find their position and become established for or against. If now she has just dealt with those who are newbies to Seventh-day Adventism and they are coming in grips with the writings of Sister White, let patience be exercised upon them. Let them be given fellowship. Then she goes to the statement if, if they fight against the visions of which they have no knowledge, if they carry their opposition so far as to oppose that in which they have had no experience and feel annoyed when those who believe that the visions are of God speak of them in meeting and comfort themselves with the instruction given through the vision, the church may know that they are not right. God's people should not cringe and yield and give up their liberty to such a disaffected ones. God has placed the gift in the church that the church may be benefited by them. And when professed believers in the truth oppose these gifts and fight against the visions, souls are in danger through their influence and it is time and to labor with them sorry for the call a, a reader in uh, 1 t three thirty, she says sister since sister h has been at uh, this church she has despised the visions and has related here says reports as though she knew that they were true she has restored no influence translated to India, me. She did not know but that the visions were of God. She had no personal acquaintance with the humble instrument, and yet she has united with the unconsecrated ones in to exert a strange influence against me. They have strengthened one another by loving and reporting false stories coming from different sources, and in this way have nourished their prejudice. There can, no, there can be no union between their spirit and the spirit of the messages which the Lord sees fit to give for the benefit of his humble people. The spirit which dwells in their hearts cannot harmonize with the light given of God. And so what should people do? Uh, uh, what should people do when such a things uh, rise uh, with such a things? Actually, she says that uh, uh, they should not be fellowship. They should not be fellowship. And if they are ministers, then if they want to oppose what has been given in the councils, they should be relieved of their duties because their influence is not good to the congregation. And so Sister White herself settles the question, what should be done to the people who are coming to truth and those who have been in truth and are opposing the council? Thank you, uh, 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 Brother Zado, the moderator. Uh, thank you very much because uh, uh, what you're saying, Brother Sami, really, Brother Brian asked a very important question. And the issue is not about the shape, because we could be seeing it from the end of the shape. But the whole issue uh, uh, boils down to questioning the inspiration of Ellen White. So, <clears throat> and then we need to be a little bit practical. I'm thankful for Brother Patrick. But is it true that those who have proposed the idea that the earth is flat are accepting not to mention that Ellen White is not inspired on this matter. That's certainly not true. Seeing this is a matter that deals with organization, we must be practical in order to be able to know what, what because we are dealing with current problems. You're not dealing with imaginary problems. So we know the truth that every single person that proposes the idea that the earth is flat must end up believing that Ellen White is not inspired in that matter. And I say that with a lot of finality because every single minister that I know believes in the flat earth, believes Ellen White does not have the light on that subject. 
And so they question the inspiration of Ellen White. And that's why now it goes to is questioning the inspiration of Ellen White for those who have had time, who have been months old in the church, who have had time to know what the Bible says about the testimonies of the spirit of prophecy. Are these people not impelling their salvation? Which is what Brother Sami has actually labored to answer that indeed, if they're newly coming in, then the church must bear patiently with them. But if they are years old in the truth, if they are months, they, they have had an opportunity to prove and know that she is inspired of God, then they are influenced by continually mentioning that Ellen White is not inspired removes the confidence of the people from the spirit of prophecy. And you know, the spirit of prophecy says that those who will doubt the spirit of prophecy must first doubt the Bible. And we've seen it, brothers. I might not even mention name, but we've had ministers who began by doubting the spirit of prophecy. And finally, they do not believe. And they are one true God believers. They do not believe anymore that certain sections of the Bible are inspired. This is prophecy fulfilling right in front of us. So it all believes, and uh, how, how does it really come? Let's deal with the real matters. It all begins by having a, a, a rather sort of a doctrinal matter in question. And this doctrinal matter is set uh, right in the spirit of prophecy. And brethren interpret the scriptures differently in regard to this matter. And so when that situation occurs where we see a matter differently from the Bible, then what, what, what is always said is, um, I see it rightly, but you see it wrongly. And so we run to the spirit of prophecy to set the matter straight and people say no. And do you know that in the, in the pioneer Seventh-day Adventist church, when brethren were not agreeing on a matter and they had studied and studied and things were not being clear to them, vision was given to Sister Ellen G. White. That means if we all have verses in regard to this matter, then we don't agree because both sides have the verses and we don't agree, then we must go and hear what the spirit revealed to the prophet. And so if by believing in the flat earth, we must hit or strike away Ellen White's inspiration on that subject, then there is a whole lot of questions as to whether for those who have been long in the, uh, in the movement or long been in the church, baptized, read, and, and then believed in the many foundational truths of Seventh-day Adventists, if we should maintain fellowship with them, it's, it's a big question that we must settle. Or else we must be sure that many of the people coming in will end up not believing that Ellen White is inspired. Or at least what I agree with, she's inspired. What I don't agree with, she's not inspired. And the drama can continue. <laughs> okay, Brother Sami, we are almost... Uh... Yeah, we are out of time, but I just wanted to bring this one point that I had left out in 1T329.1. It has been very hard for the servants of God to labor in uh, northern Wisconsin, for there has been a class of self-righteous, talkative, unruly ones there who have stood in the way of the work of God. If received into the church, they will tear it to pieces. They will not be subject to the body and will never be satisfied unless the reins of church government were in their hands. If you read the whole uh, history of northern Wisconsin, Actually, an elder was uh, compelled to disfellowship some members who were opposing uh, the things that E.G. White had written. And uh, E.G. White, when you look at that whole chapter, she says that the elder was right because they, they were really distracting the church. So now I, I just want to go to, to go to my last point. Will those who are saying the earth is round and those who are saying the earth is flat and our ministers of the gospel leave the matter as it is. 
because it is going to divide the church. Are we humble enough to receive the counsels or shall we continue to say that now Sister White did not have light on this and that? Shall we not leave the matter where it is and work on our characters? Thank you. Well, um, May it be so in Jesus' name. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, indeed, the, the, the big issue here is uh, perfection of Christian character. And, and, and that's where it needs to be. And if we are going to have gospel workers who are going to go out agitating this matter of, uh, of, of the shape of the earth, then they do not understand their calling. They do not understand their syllabus at all. And then and, and so I think that we, we, we are sort of in agreement. We are in agreement and I praise the Lord for that, that um, we must understand our syllabus as uh, messengers, uh, angels flying in the midst of the, of the air, proclaiming the first, second, and third angels' message. And, and, and so um, uh, it's important that as ministers, we understand what, is, what are the testing truths that needs to be brought before the world for such a time as this, but to continue supporting and resourcing for uh, ministers who are going to go out and teach that the earth is this shape or that shape is, is a waste of God's resources. Uh, we end up, of course, with what Sister White says, what is this to us? It's, it's, it's not a salvation of matter. Amen. It's not a salvation of matter. So I don't know if there is anyone with a final remark before we get a prayer from one of the brethren. I would like to say this, uh, excuse me for speaking a lot, but um, I thank God for the platform that uh, you created. We may discuss such a things. I I'd like to say that uh, we are almost to the end of this earth history. Shall we devote our time to those things that really can uh, get people at uh, some grip so that uh, they may be able to stand before the Lord uh, when uh, we don't have a priest in the heavenly sanctuary? This is my prayer. This is what I'm praying. And um, I have been sharing with brethren uh, that uh, really there's a work to do, but if we will get involved in answering every critic and uh, what they want us to uh, uh, busy our pens writing upon and answering their question, we will not be doing the work of Nehemiah. The work of Nehemiah was to restore the building of Jerusalem. We are spiritual stones to restore the spiritual house. And if Satan will get a way of getting us from the real thing of building this spiritual house, he will have our pens engaged. And we will think that we are busy doing the work of the Lord. At the end of the day, God will ask you, I gave you five talents. Can you please uh, now remunerate what you did with it? Some of us will be found speechless, Brother Zado and uh, the other brethren. And so let us be more prayerful. I beg that we be more prayerful than just issuing statements, issuing statements here and there. Oh, this is not inspired. Oh, this is not in the Bible. Oh, this sister, why did not have this? What is it to thee? We are told in Daniel 8, 14, and to 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. That is something that should preoccupy our mind rather than anything else that has ever faced this earth. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, Brother Sami. We will be praying and then I'll just give a brief announcement for tomorrow to get us ready for it. So uh, perhaps uh, Brother Patrick, you'll pray for us. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord, we thank you for the gracious, for the masses bestowed, not because we're good, but because we are good and you want to save us. We thank you for the programs and for this technology that has allowed us to link and share minds together. And Father, as we go through these subjects, 
they are perishing souls. We too are seeking perfection and help us further that we shall not divert into peripheral matters that may consume our time. And we may be puffed up by getting very fine lines and spending much time in those things that are not food for the moment. Help us that we shall go out with meat for due season. The men who are in darkness, by your grace, even as you have shared it to us, that they may come out of darkness unto marvelous light. Bless each one and everyone in here. That they will seek unity of the brethren, that they will seek to work in the one body, even the body of Christ, thy church. That Father, everyone will seek the good of the other, seeking to see the church one, speaking the same things, even as it is in heaven. For you and your son have one mind, and that's the same mind you want us to have. Until tomorrow, by God's grace, by your grace, when we meet again, if you so wills, Father, may it be that it will be well with us, that the only angels stay with us, until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.